Hey everyone, welcome back. Bigelow Reviews here. I'm Brent Bigelow, and I have a new review for you, and that is Casey Musgraves' new album. Uh, <laughs> what's it called? That is Casey Musgraves' new album, Starcrossed. This is Casey Musgraves' fourth studio album, if you exclude her two Christmas albums that she's made in her career. Uh, this being the follow-up to her massive hit album, Golden Hour. Uh, which is one of my favorite albums. Uh, I, I love that album. I could listen to that thing over and over again. Um, on that album, she kind of put away her countryside and came out with this poppy, uh, Dolly Parton-like energy of positivity. And it really was a, like a pretty good album. I loved it. It's probably her best album. Uh, some of the songs on there I really love. I think these are some of the best country music that's been made um, in the last few years. I am a pretty hard <laughs> critic of modern day country music. I I love country music, but I'm very picky about it. Some of the songs on here are beautiful. I, I, I tear up every time listening to them. Songs like uh, Rainbows, uh, beautiful song. That album was just so good, and um, I was hoping that she would make another album just like it, um, with it being star-crossed and it's not very good. On this album, she really leans into and talks about her divorce with her husband. Uh, which par definitely played a huge part on this album. It's easy if you read the lyrics and read the liner notes and figure everything out. Um, it's in fact impacted her a lot. And uh, it's really funny because she made Golden Hour, which is all about happiness and love when she was married. And then she makes this album that's all about not being married and the divorce process and all of that stuff. And ideally what it's like to be a good wife. And she talks about all this stuff on here. And a lot of the lyrics just sound not like what today's modern women are, are about. Uh, there's a lot of really bad cliches, especially on the track, Good Wife, where she's talking about how she's making breakfast and bringing it to bed and giving it to her man. And there's all these like really cliche type female stereotypes that uh, she sings about, whether it's ironically or not, it comes off in a very sincere way. And honestly, a lot of the songs on here just sound really cliche and lean into the hokiness of relationship and love, whether that's ironic or not. <laughs> like I said, Good Wife is a good example of that. Even Cherry Blossom, that leans into this like Japanese, Chinese influence of music uh, with the uh, the chord progression and even some of the instrument uh, instrumentals. Um, it's just not a good track and it's bad to hear somebody <laughs> try to rip off that style of music and not do it in a, in a good way. Probably one of the only songs on here I really do like, it's, there's a couple on here I do like, but, uh, but Simple Times is a good one on here that I do enjoy. It has a, has a really strong hook on it, but it just sounds too poppy. I, she, she leaned a little too pop and not enough country on here. It needs to be somewhere in the middle. Uh, for her to have a good album. I think Golden Hour is a perfect representation of what she can do on those blurred lines. But uh, this just, it's not it for me. I'm not really liking this album. Which which is unfortunate because I uh, I, pre I pre ordered it and I have it. And I, I definitely like it. I got a limited pressing on it, which is cool. But uh, yeah, I, got, I, I hopped on the, the, the enjoyment of Golden Hour and I wanted to buy it. And I got it. So I have it. And now I'm stuck with it. <laughs> Another song that has this like really cliche lyrics is uh, uh, What Doesn't Kill Me. Uh, just it's another one of those songs like whatever doesn't kill me makes me stronger and I'm gonna come out of this on the bright side and we've all heard a thousand pop songs that tail over the same tropes and it's just not anything we haven't heard before. Um, another one on here that I did like is if this was a movie I really like the chord progression and just how dark and sinister the song sounds. Uh, it's one of my favorite parts of this album just because you don't really hear you don't really hear Casey singing songs that are like this kind of like dark sounding everything she does is super glitzy and poppy and just covered in glitter. Uh, having this song with like some really weird chord progressions and just like really dark and brooding acoustic guitar is kind of cool to hear her do. Um, I just wish it was on with a, a better album. <laughs> uh, she does this whole thing on here because it's like I said, the song's called If This Was A Movie. She kind of made like the short film using all these songs about the heartbreak and everything. I didn't get to watch it. Um, just because I wanted to treat the album like it's its own separate thing and not have that influence it. Um, but I'm sure that some of these songs make a little more sense. But just the, the lyrics of the album just kind of run a little too cliche and it's kind of, they lean too cheesy for me. Another song that's very much a modern day issue that a lot of people have with breaking up with somebody is a song Camera Roll. Where you have all these moments on your phone, but you're like, I don't want to delete them because they were good moments. But it's kind of a w cool way to think of a breakup. And I'm sure all of us have had those thoughts where you're like, damn, I can't get rid of this. Why why would, why would I do such a thing? How people like purge their Instagram accounts when they break up with somebody and delete all their photos. 
Um, but, you know, it's it's a problem that a lot of millennials and modern day people will have to deal with. Like, Chad and, Chad and I went to this concert. It was so memorable. I can't get rid of these moments. <laughs> And then even this whole album has this like uh, dramatic Spanish feel to it. It just all sounds like, it feels like she's trying to do this like country Western thing and it just comes off not very well either. Everything she tries to do, it's a good idea in theory, but then the execution is just not there. I'm not really feeling a Star Cross that much. And uh, I think it might be one of Casey's worst projects, unfortunately, um, especially after one of her best ones. It's kind of weird to see such a, a huge just dip um, in work, but I'm sure that's all it comes with, you know, with divorces and just relationship issues in general, and, which is unfortunate because I really do like Casey. She's one of my favorites, and I used to say there's only two people in country music worth listening to, and that's Chris Stapleton and Casey Musgraves, and now I kind of have to change my statement. I give this album a 23. I'm not really feeling it that much. There's not much good on it. Um, and yeah, what'd you think? Put your score on the bottom, uh, put your comments and everything else in there. Give this video a like, share it, subscribe, uh, follow me on Twitter at Bigler Reviews, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Biggie out.